Welcome to the State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The 21st session of the Governing Council of the Republic of Western Armenia. Azerbaijan's response to Western Armenia within the framework of the United Nations. The UN should demand from Baku to release Armenian prisoners before COP29. Paul Polman. An agreement between Yerevan and Baku is possible. U.S. Department of State. About the unique Hajkar of Artsakh. Armenian national clothes, culture, traditions and customs at the Taras Fet Festival. Bronze medals from the International Biology Olympiad. On 15 July, the regular session of the Governing Council of the Republic of Western Armenia took place. The President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Ms. Lydia Margosyan, gave an opening speech at the meeting. She spoke about the protection of the rights of indigenous peoples. She referred to the appeals for the protection of the rights of indigenous peoples of Armenia from Artsakh, who were forcibly displaced from their lands, which were presented during the UN conferences, condemning Baku for the forced displacement, atrocities and genocidal acts committed against the Armenians from Artsakh. President Didier Margosyan once again reminded about their free speeches at the UN, particularly emphasizing the fact that we should work to preserve the language of our native because the Western Armenian language is under serious threat. At the 17th session of the Expert Mechanism on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in Geneva, the representative of Baku answered the delegation of Western Armenia. According to her, the entirety called Armenians of Western Armenia continuously abuses this important platform for political purposes, supporting illegal occupation and separatism, which is absolutely inaccessible. She calls Western Armenia an unknown entity and notes that the person representing that entity allegedly uses the platform against their country, spreading disinformation. Continuing her speech, she said that neither the structure nor the statement has anything to do with indigenous peoples. They doubt the fact that President Lydia Margosyan and President Armin Abrahamian are representatives of Western Armenia. She claimed that they are foreign agents of the diaspora Armenians who undermine the construction of the peace agenda in the region. According to the representative of Baku, Karabakh is an internationally recognized autonomous territory of Azerbaijan and the use of non-existent geographical names of the territory of Azerbaijan calls into question its sovereignty and territorial integrity, which contradicts the UN Charter. Azerbaijan has a multicultural multi-ethnic society and applies equal rights to national minorities who live in our region and this is also enshrined. We call on the representative of the expert mechanics to pay attention to this circumstance and are the participants of the conference to refrain from provocative statements that contradict the UN Charter and violate the norms and principles of international law. And in the end I would like to draw your attention to the situation of the rights of ethnic Azerbaijanis who were deprived of their ancestral lands and property due to ethnic cleansing. The inability to return to our central lands in the territory of present-day Armenia is unjust, which must be resolved through the human rights mechanisms and bodies. Baku is a country that does not respect human rights and international law. That country has only a poor score of 7 out of 100 points from the Freedom House organization. The former vice president of the UN Global Compact Treaty, Paul Polman, emphasized in his article. The article was published in the British Express periodical, and he noted that since 2003, when Ilham Aliyev inherited the presidency from his father, corruption developed in that country. Civil liberties were destroyed and political opposition crushed, leaving no opportunity for free expression of civic activism. Journalists are persecuted in case if they resist, they up in prison. Those who live in the country, their families are persecuted wrote he in the article. After a 10-month local blockade which deprived the local population of food, fuel and basic medical supplies, Baku forced more than 100,000 Armenians to flee their homes. It was called as genocide. Eastern Armenia and Baku have made great progress and come a long way in concluding a peace treaty, said Matthew Miller, the spokesman of the U.S. Secretary of State, adding that Washington continues to urge the parties to conclude the peace treaty. The peace agreement between the two countries will be of great importance for the region, for peace, stability and security for the region. We really believe that an agreement is possible, but it requires both sides to make difficult choices and make difficult compromises, emphasized him. Miller said that the parties had made progress in Washington but did not provide any details. We don't have an agreement yet and we are not going to rest until we will reach it, said Miller. The National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia is trying to remind the international community that the international treaty already exists and it is the Treaty of Severus. 
The Independent Academic Platform Monitoring Artsakh Cultural Heritage presents a unique manifestation of Artsakh Khachkar iconography in Armenian Khachkar culture. It represents mortals, their main occupation, expectations, popular ideas about immortality. Among the many characters and themes, the character of the warriors and the theme of battle are of particular importance. When this remarkable manifestation began, it is not clear to the end. Judging from the Khachkar inscriptions bearing warriors' images, one can consider their most probable beginning to be the middle of the 12th century, when the authorities of Arsa started a persistent struggle for the liberation of the territory. About three years ago, Khachkar was found in the woods of Patretsik village. It is worth well mentioning that the Khachkar does not have an inscription and its approximate time can be judged based on the dimensional resolution, iconographic features of the individual components of the composition, and the technical performance of the sculpture. The sculpture also stands out for its simplicity. The rider clothes, head, face, harness, saddle are not shown in detail. The drawn sword and the scabbard attached to the belt are more plausible. The listed detail provide a basis for uh, attributing the Khachkar to the 11th century, considering the beginning of the 12th century as the uppermost limit. The 6th Taras Fat Festival will be held, and the goal is to present the Armenian national dress, culture, tradition, and customs to a wide range of the public. In the first part of the event, an exhibition sale is planned with the participation of craftsmen, museums, and companies representing Armenian products. In the process, national games, educational and entertainment programs, daytime exhibitions presenting the collections of young designers who will be held in the second part of the festival. There will be an exhibition of national clothes with a modern presentation. Individual collections of costumes will be exhibited on Tejan Culture Center. Local and international designers and clothes containing elements of Armenian ornaments and carpet patterns. Throughout the festival, there will also be traditional Armenian song dance ensembles. The Eastern Armenian team won two bronze medals at the 45 International Biology Olympiad, which was held on July 7 up to 14 in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. 305 representatives from 81 countries participated in the Olympiad. Our team was represented by Kamuni, Abrahamian, Tatev Simonian, Hakob Perikhanian, and Rubika Apetian. Tatev Simonian and Hakob Perikhanian won bronze medals. During the seven days of the Olympiad, the participants performed two theoretical tasks and four experimental works in biochemistry, molecular biology, bioformatics, animal anatomy, and physiology. This was all for today. Goodbye.